Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. Let's take a look at who's been earning the applause around the major leagues this week. In Boston, Jim Rice, whose power has sent the Red Sox rocketing upwards. In Pittsburgh, the base dealer. In Montreal, they expose, getting down to serious contention. In Oakland, it's the continuing story of the fantastic age. In New York, it's the smiling face of Billy the Kid. And wherever you look, it's the tough life of the Major League umpire. All this and more coming up next on This Week in Baseball. no laughing matter to other teams in the American League, but Billy Martin and his New York Yankees have been looking loose. Maybe that's because the Yanks have started to cut loose with enough defensive polish to make any diamond glitter. about it. The world champs are strong everywhere, especially on the mound, which is the concern of this man, Thurman Munson. We are strong. You know, we've got a super amount of pitching talent. Uh, I think the question is going to be whether the uh, whether the starters are going to be ready early this year or like last year, have to wait till August. <clears throat> we've got some guys with some arm trouble and sometimes after spring training you go up in the cold weather and your arms get a little bit, you know, uh, stiff and uh, we've got four or five guys who, you know, we're just going to have to wait to see how it goes. And, of course, when you got Gossett, Gossett, and Lyle, you don't have to worry too much. For over a year, the Yankees have worried about Catfish Hunter, but those worries could be almost over. The Catfish looked strong when he beat the Royals for his first victory since August of last year. That would be a big plus for Billy Martin, who can draw a pair of aces from his bullpen that no one dares bet against. Sparky Lyle, last year's Cy Young Award winner, has picked up right where he left off, winning two games, saving four more in his first 17 innings. Lyle nails down Yankee victory. So does his new bullpen buddy, Rich Gossage, known as the Goose. He's been cooking up a row of goose eggs on the scoreboard with a fastball that steams in at 99 miles per hour. The Yankees really began to roll when they slowed down the Kansas City Royals in their first confrontation since the two teams clashed for a pennant last year. Greg Nettles is famed for cold Aprils, but May has arrived and Nettles is heating up. Deep to right, it's going, going, and it is gone. An eighth inning blast that completed a Yankee three-game sweep over the Royals. The Yankees are back to swinging the bats in the Bronx bomber tradition. Chris Chambliss hadn't hit a homer in his first 24 games. But in the 12th inning against Texas, score tied, Chambliss unloads. He's done it before, so have the Yankees. But everything's starting to fall into place. The question is, who can stop the world champions from doing it all again this year? In Boston, they believe they can answer that question. Fenway fans have no doubts about their Red Sox. Their manager is confident, too. Uh, I think we have an outstanding ball club uh, with a healthy Fred Lynn and a healthy Dwight Evans. And I know we're going to pitch 100% better this year than we did last year. And uh, I, I know we're going to have a great year. I'm not a guy to predict uh, Eastern Division championships, 
but I know we're a hell of a ball club and we're going to be tough to beat. Last summer, Fred Lynn played on a bad ankle. Now he's healthy. Bad news for the Yankees because Lynn can really drive the runs home. Don Zimmer said the Sox would be tough to beat, and so far they've been almost impossible to beat at Fenway Park. Last year's American League home run champion Jim Rice is ahead of the pack this year in both home runs and RBI. But they're used to cheering the long ball at Fenway. Sox sluggers led the majors and homers last year. But lately, the crowd's been cheering everybody, like new second baseman Jerry Remy. Of course, great veteran Carl Yastrzemski has been applauded for almost two decades. But all that noise is still music to his ears. I've always enjoyed the Boston fans. Uh, the one thing you have to say about them, <clears throat> they love baseball, they know baseball, they support baseball. They're just great people. And Fenway fans know great pitching when they see it. Rookie Jim Wright showed them some with a shutout in his first Major League start. For another pitcher, the fans took a special initiative to show their appreciation. Mike Torres, former Yankee, had a shutout going with two outs in the ninth against Chicago. Bobby Bonds had to wait while the fans let out a long standing ovation. No pitcher could disappoint a crowd after that. Strike three. The game's over. But if Red Sox pitching continues like this, the season may not be over in Fenway Park until sometime in October. Out west in Oakland, they know they're nowhere in your October yet, but the young A's continue to be simply amazing. Since most people figured the A's to finish last, many now figure them to be playing over their heads. Could be, but whoever figured these young pitchers would be the best in baseball so far? Their statistics have been incredible. They've shown American League hitters more than an eyeful. Manager Bobby Winkles talks about his surprising staff. Well, it's a young pitching staff with a group of good arms, and uh, so far they haven't walked themselves out of any ball games. And when you can do that, I think you have a lot better chance than, say, going out there with a guy that just throws a sinker or has a trick pitch. And so I feel that uh, the young pitching staff, uh, they started out strong. And, you know, nobody can expect the team to go through the season with a 1.25 ERA. <laughs> now they, I don't know who could expect that, but uh, we're very happy with them, and we think they're strong young men, and I think that's the basis of becoming a good pitching staff. The consensus opinion is possibly correct. Sooner or later, Oakland's flying A's may tumble. But who can say? Who could have said that Gary Alexander would have five game-winning home runs? Probably not even Charlie O. Finn. In the National League, Pittsburgh's powerful Pirates have been famed for rattling their backs. But nowadays, manager Chuck Tanner rattles opposing managers with something else. Base stealing. Everybody runs. Willie Stargell can't outrun the ball, but watch this slide. Veteran Bill Robinson is certainly no Olympic sprinter. But watch him ease on down the road. Base stealing can be an art form, but Dodger catcher Steve Yeager and his pitcher Tommy John sure didn't appreciate the Pirates' talent. The Bucks swiped eight bases in one game. Frank Tavera sails into third like the winged victory. With lumber at the plate and lightning on the bases, 
the pirates can beat you more ways than one. Pirate Omar Moreno leads the majors in steel, which is only natural in the steel city. But they've still got a lot of lumber there. Dave Parker won't let anyone forget that there's nothing like a good line drive to send everyone scampering home with something more than just an artistic victory. Bonjour, Montreal. Come on, ça va. Très bien, merci. Say the Expos. We're off and running in the National League East. With talented youngsters like Andre Dawson, the Expos are keeping pace with the Phillies at the top. Manager Dick Williams is always serious about winning. And he has some proven veterans to help him out, like Dave Cash. He's played on winners before. So has Tony Perez, who's shooting for his 12th straight year of 90 or more RBIs. This team has some real balance. The veterans provide leadership, while youngsters like Gary Carter offer exuberance. You can say, oh, revoir to that one. Of course, there's nothing like a grand slam to brighten up the spirits of any team, young or old. In the past, Montreal's biggest problem was pitching, but free agent Ross Grimsley has helped solve that. He's one big reason why Dick Williams' team could be for real this year. Grimsley became the first pitcher in the league to win five games. Now, if the Expos win a baseball championship, we'll all have to brush up a little bit on our French. Miss it, Bob? The San Francisco Giants are another early season surprise, winning games by playing them tight to the best. To do that, you need talented pitchers. And the Giants have a bundle, like this young left-hander, Bob Nepper. The Cubs lost two straight two-to-one cliffhangers to the Giants, and when they're that tight, every play counts. has a team that could shock a lot of people. Vita Blue shocked the Cubs by winning his fourth straight game. How about that, son? Through the first five innings, Mr. Blue had Cub fans wondering if they were going to see a no-hitter. But this base hit took care of that idea. Willie McCovey gives leadership and confidence to Vita Blue and the Young Giants. They know he's been through more than one pennant race. Big Mac knows what it takes, and one thing is a little luck. There's a nice present. Pen ace Gary LaBelle to wrap it up. The San Francisco Giants just might hang in there till the bottom of the ninth. Now let's take a break from the action and look in on the guys that deserve a break. Big league umpires. They're not the stars on the diamond, but they have been known to steal a scene. Watch this umpire steal into the scene at second base. Thanks, pal. Now, can we move on? 
Sometimes big league coaches like to move in on the umpires. Here's one who's saying something that best not be translated. While disagreeing with the umpire's verdict, deep down he knows it'll do no good. Umpires have learned to face these tough characters and often feel tougher themselves when they stick together. Talking about tough characters, the mad Hungarian, Al Roboski. The Kansas City relief pitcher is doing his thing, the sight. Reggie Jackson waits patiently. But the umpire says, we've waited long enough and calls the ball. If the Hungarian wasn't mad to begin with, he's sure mad now. He knows he's allowed only 20 seconds in which to throw the ball, but where's the evidence? Right there on the stopwatch. Umpires watch everything, almost. Watch this, Lenny Randall batting. Tug McGraw pitching. Here's the first pitch. Strike one, nothing and one. Ball one, one and one. Ball two, two balls and a strike. Strike two, two balls, two strikes, the count. Ball three, a full count. Ball four, but no one says a word. Not Randall, certainly not McGraw. The count is four balls and two strikes. Who says a walk's as good as a hit? Scored in an error on the umpire and a triple for Lenny Randall. Sometimes umpires want to kick themselves, and this one does. Seems he had trouble making up his mind, safe or out. Now, let's judge some defensive efforts that don't need the umpire's help. First, from the New York Yankees. Second baseman, Willie Randolph, campaigning early for all-star votes. Now, a center fielder who missed most of last season, Cleveland's Rick Manning, after another gold glove. Now, a rookie many think is the fastest man in the majors, Kansas City's Willie Wilson. speed in the outfield. This time from the White Sox, Chet Lemon. Lemonade for the pitcher. Finally, some play for the Angels. Shortstop Dave Chalk, simply divine. Second baseman, Bobby Gritch, twisting and turning. And in center field, don't knock Lyman Bostop. Baseball history. Pete Rose with 2,999 career hits and his fans just waiting for the big one. And there it is, number 3,000. Pete Rose becomes the 13th player in baseball to reach that honored figure. what could have suited the occasion better than for Pete to have Tony Perez, former teammate and close friend, right there by his side. An emotional moment for everyone. Eight more hits, I'm moving notch up, but uh, there's a lot of great players up there. I'm just happy to have my name Lisa mentioned. The same breath. The Cardinals, Lou Brock, could join Pete before long. He needs fewer than 150 hits to reach 3,000. And Boston's Carl Yastrzemski has a good chance for 3,000, too. Long ago, Ted Williams forecast great things for a then young Carl Yastrzemski, and now he's doing the same for this man, Jim Rice. The great thing about Rice is that he has such good power hitting at any place that if he hits it solid, something's going to happen. Big. 
and he's a, an intelligent guy that is really striving to get everything he can out of this game. I mean, you, you can only say good things about Rice. The Gillette Company honors Jim Rice with this week's Gillette Special. In nine games, the Boston Slugger hit 556, collecting 20 hits, including five homers, 17 RBIs, and lifting his batting average to 379 for the year. He even had to overcome a Kansas City chip, featuring four outfielders. Jim Rice of the Boston Red Sox. Well, that's all for now, folks. Join us next week on This Week in Baseball.